the Titans have their first rematch of the 2023 season this weekend, taking on the Indianapolis Colts at home. We are gonna preview this game right now. This is the Music City Audible. Let's get to it. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast presented by Broadway Sports Media in partnership with 440 Sports. I'm Justin Graver. With me as always is Justin Mello and Justin, the Titans taking on the Colts again this weekend with a playoff dream still alive i'm gonna keep peddling this thing <laughs> yeah i hear you i mean look it's the moment of truth right you peddled it a couple of days ago when we did our panthers recap you talked about the success at nissan stadium now four and oh in that stadium four of their last six games will be played at nissan stadium so i see what you're getting at here although i didn't necessarily agree i am <laughs> excited about this rematch i want to talk about the last meeting things Titans got to do better, things I wish I was seeing in this game that I won't be, and uh, some potentially uh, big injury news on the Colts front. Yes, we're going to get into all of that. I want to start here by talking about the record. So the Titans currently sit last in the AFC South, 4-7. and seven. The two teams ahead of them are the Houston Texans and Indianapolis Colts, both at 6-5. and five. The Jags at the top of the division at 8-3. and three. The Titans are the only team in the division with a, a negative point differential on the season. They are 0-2 in the division so far this year, with losses coming to the Colts and the Jags. Two matchups with Houston still to go. And their second uh, matchup with the Colts here, their third division game. Look, nobody really thinks the Titans are going to make noise this year, but if they want to have any chance to do so, they got to win a division game, and it starts this weekend what are you looking at as the Titans rematch the Colts? You said things they got to do better. What are some things they got to do better? Well, there are a lot of things in the last game that, uh, you know, certainly defined why they lost that game. Number one, they were outgained 429 to 348. So they were outgained by about 80 yards by the Colts offense. Keep in mind an offense that lost their starting quarterback, Anthony Richardson, early in that game and had to turn to Gardner Minshew. Now, of course, we now know that was a season ending injury for Richardson, and Minshew has been starting ever since. Titans did not take advantage of that, right? Minshew was like 11 of 14, played a lot of hero ball, made the secondary look really bad. Um, there were other things that concerned me. The Titans, you know, Derrick Henry is coming off a two-touchdown performance here against the Panthers. Are we about to see D. Henber? I mean, you certainly hope so. <laughs> Everyone remembers what that's all about. But uh, it, it didn't feel like that the last time he played the Colts. The Titans were held to 89 net rush yards. In fact, Tajay Spears was their leading rusher in that game. Derrick Henry only had 43 yards. He was held to 3.3 yards per carry. So the Colts really shut him down and, and helped win that game uh, on the – recap episode of the Panthers you talked about third down defense and how annoyed you are with it uh you know penalties allowing conversions well Titans didn't do a good job on third down against the Colts as, as long ago as that game was Colts were eight of 13 on third down in that game that's just way too efficient Titans were five for 12 by comparison uh you know Josh Downs again a guy you know that I was high on was outstanding in that game for the Colts six catches for 97 yards he hasn't really slowed down since. I, I think he showcased uh, some really good chemistry with Gardner Minshew. I hate to say this because, you know, not to crap on Gardner, but and my, D Downs is a bad quarterback's best friend because he's always <laughs> open. He uncovers so easily. He uncovers near the line of scrimmage. He's just such an easy go-to weapon, one the Titans could have really used in this offense. I'm going to keep beating that drum since I was so high on him pre-draft. Uh, Titans will need a big game from DeAndre Hopkins as well. He, he was great in that last one. You may have forgotten because Titans were so bad in that game overall. He had eight <laughs> catches for 140 yards. I don't think there's a guy in this cold secondary that can cover him. They're just too young, too inexperienced. Their best corner, Kenny Moore, you know, more of a nickel guy, too small to cover DeAndre Hopkins on a snap-by-snap -snap basis. Hopkins should be able to take advantage uh, of, of whoever he's lined up opposite. One thing I just want to put out there, because it's, it, it's kind of quirky, quirky to me, excuse me, uh, this is almost like the third different quarterback matchup uh, between the Titans and Colts this season, right? Because it started with Ryan Tannehill and Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson got so hurt so early in that game. It became Ryan Tannehill versus Gardner Minshew. And now, yeah. of course, it'll be Will Levis versus Gardner Minshew. I'll say I wish for a fourth combination. It's a shame that it's not Will Levis versus Anthony Richardson, right? Because that would have been so exciting to see these two rookie quarterbacks. Heck, you would have seen Levis go back to back against Bryce Young and then Anthony Richardson, right. you know, if, if things felt that way. But before, and then do they got the Texans next week? It would have been CJ Stroud the week after, I think, right? That would have, oh my man, that would have been crazy. Yeah, they play the Dolphins between the Colts and Texans. So the Dolphins is their next game. My but. bad. 
So but close but we can keep it going. It would have been Will Levis versus a Hawaiian. You know, and Hawaiian quarterbacks <laughs> were really liked uh, around these parts once upon a time. So, no, I'm kidding. I, I wish it was Levis versus Richardson. We're not going to get that. Uh, I left out one stat there in particular, the player that really killed the Titans in that last game. Yep. Uh, but I thought I'd give you an opportunity to bring it up as we're sort of on injury watch. Yeah, so the, the Indianapolis Colts announced that Jonathan Taylor is dealing with a thumb injury, and his status going forward is very much in doubt. Apparently, there are considerations of whether or not he could go on injured reserve, which is ironic that his first game back this season was against the Titans, and now his first game missing again could be against the Titans. But it does seem like he will most likely not suit up on Sunday, and if even if he did, we might see a similar split to what the Colts did the last time when they were working Taylor back in slowly, and the guy that you're referencing, Zach Moss, absolutely torched the Titans on the ground. It was that first game where we were wondering what happened to the Titans run defense because up to that point yep. it had been very stout and then it was that Colts game where everything just broke open. 165 yards, he had two touchdowns, that's 7.2 yards per carry. Of course, uh boosted by the opening touchdown in that game in the first quarter. He broke off a 56-yard touchdown. I still remember looking at my TV in shock because, number one, yep. I didn't know that Zach Moss had the breakaway speed, to be honest, in the <laughs> open field, uh, seriously, to, to pick up a 56-yard touchdown. And secondly, like you said, Titans run defense, excellent reputation heading into that game. I think they were number one or two in the league at that point still in run defense. They were number one in the league last season. That was very confusing. And now since then, you know, there, there have been some other issues. They weren't very good against Baltimore. They weren't very good against Pittsburgh. So we've kind of seen it, you know, not maybe not to that extreme, but it hasn't been good since, right? And it felt like that was the game that sort of broke the dam, broke the camel's back. So um, even if Jonathan Taylor's out in this game, I, I don't think as a Titans fan, you can find any comfort in that, right? All right, based on how well uh, Zach Moss played last time out, he completely torched him. In fact, I'm a Zach Moss fantasy owner, and uh, if he's uh, if he's starting this game, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm definitely gonna flex him and put him in the lineup just in case. I mean, you can't pass up a running back that's starting most weeks in fantasy, but certainly a guy that had nearly 200 yards and two touchdowns last time out. Yeah, you get Zach Moss into your lineups. Let's talk about some of the things you mentioned there, looking at the Titans offense versus the Colts defense first. And I want to uh, go back to Derrick Henry, who you mentioned. Is this going to be D. Henber? Very much struggled, as you mentioned, last time the Titans played the Colts. Um, he only had 43 yards, 3.3 yards per carry. But could we see what we've seen so far through Derrick Henry's career start to take shape here? Derrick Henry, in his career before Thanksgiving has averaged 73.1 rushing yards per game and 4.3 yards per carry. In his career after Thanksgiving, that number jumps from 73 to 97.6 rushing yards per game, and the yards per carry goes from 4.3 to 5.4. We saw it start a little bit last week when Derrick Henry ripped off 81 yards after contact. He only rushed for 76 yards. And 81 of those 76 yards came after contact, which means he was getting hit in the backfield, shedding tackles, and still picking up yards. And he forced last week a season-high eight missed tackles. So are we are we starting to see the late-season Derrick Henry, and could that take shape against the Colts? Well, the Colts' defense is, is allowing the 26th most rushing yards per game, 24th most total yards per game. They're allowing the 27th most points per game, so this is a Colts team that, you know, the defense has struggled a little bit, especially on the ground. Titans want to be that ground and pound team now. They were able to shut down the Titans rushing attack last time they played, as we mentioned, but it's a different point in the season. We got different offensive linemen in the game now for the Titans. Injuries affecting everybody across the league. This is going to be important to this game is for the Titans to get Derrick Henry going. He had two rushing touchdowns last week. First game this season that he's had two rushing touchdowns in a game. Could he do something similar this weekend? Possibly. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, it's obviously too early to tell, right, if, if, if we're about to see that late season Derrick Henry. But I do think that sort of notion will, could gain a lot of confidence, so to speak, um, if he does go out here and have a great game. And he's got to bounce back. I'm sure it'll be fresh in his mind. 
that he only had 43 yards, three point yards per carry last time out against this defense. And yeah, new quarterback in Will Levis, of course, Ryan Tannehill played that first meeting. But I, I'd like to think that the Titans are still going to try. They're going to try to lean on that run game, right? They're going to try to lean on Derrick Henry. This will probably be a close game as, as it typically is, A, for the Titans, and B, when the Titans and Colts play each other. Even when the Titans got the better of them in recent years, it always seemed to come down to a late fourth quarter overtime, things of that nature. So I expect the Titans to try to lean on him. Uh, on that topic, you talked about yards after 81 yards after contact, which is like five yards less than he actually had. Um, yeah. A couple, I think it was about a week or two ago, Tim Kelly gave an answer in a press conference where he said that he felt like the Titans have been giving Derrick Henry enough space. Um, that was a bit of a bombshell answer because it almost puts the onus on Derrick Henry. You're almost blaming him, so to speak, for not uh, you know, picking up the yards that he believes are there. And look, I, I'm, not, I'm not one to question Tim Kelly. I think he's good at his job. He watches a lot more film on the Titans offense than I have, so to speak. Uh, but I, I don't know that I agree with that assessment based on what I've seen. I mean, he's constantly met in the backfield. I, this is, again, a game where he, you know, more yards after contact than actual yards. And they, they flashed the graphic on the screen during the game. Uh, this year, he's got like 5.9 yards per carry when he's not met in the backfield. And essentially mm -hmm. under a yard per carry when he is. So, I mean, and look, no running back wants to get met in the backfield. Of course, everyone's better when they're not met in the backfield, right? But when that initial contact for him doesn't happen right at the line of scrimmage or right when he touches the ball, he's still been very effective. So, I don't know, you know, maybe he's lost a step, yada, yada. But I don't necessarily agree that they've been consistently creating enough room for him to operate. And he's just leaving a bunch of yards out there. I, I don't think that's true. I don't either, but there have been a handful of plays where he didn't make the first guy miss, and it's sort of the running back's job a lot of times to make that first guy miss. Now, when that first guy is a defensive tackle who immediately sheds a block of an offensive lineman and meets you as you're receiving the handoff, that's a little bit different than when you like leave a cornerback or a safety unblocked on purpose because you like the matchup with your running back against that defender. So there, there's a little bit of nuance to that, but I do agree overall with what you're saying. I, I don't think the Titans have given Henry very much room to run. Maybe enough for Derrick Henry is a different amount than enough for a lesser running back. And maybe that's what Tim Kelly means by that. But um, I do think we could see Henry get going at least a little bit in this game, just considering the fact that the Colts rushing defense has not been great. The Titans are going to feed him. And it is that time of year, D. Henber, where we see this guy really take off as the temperatures start dropping and players' bodies are really have been taking a beating for 12, 13 weeks now. This is Henry's time. Um, what about Will Levis, who this, like we said, this will be the first time he's faced the Colts this year. Probably going to see a lot of the Colts in his career if things go as we hope in Tennessee um, twice a year every year. The Colts defense is 17th in passing yards per game allowed. They are tied with the Chargers for the sixth most sacks this season. They have 36 sacks in 11 games. That comes out to about three and a third sacks per game. Over, under, how many sacks does Levis take? Over three and a third or under? <laughs> I'm going to go under. I'm going to get bold here and take the under. I think Peter Skaronsky is really rounding back into form, you know, after the appendix situation. Jalen Duncan, I thought, played a good game. Um, on, on Sunday. So I, I'm going to take the under Daniel Brunskill's back in the lineup and healthy. I think he'll take three sacks. That's why I'm going to, I don't think they're going to pitch a shutout here, but I'll go with three sacks. I don't think it'll be more than that. And we talked about DeAndre Hopkins to eight catches for 140 yards. Last time these teams played, I actually, that led to me doing a breakdown explaining Sorry. why DeAndre Hopkins is still an elite wide receiver in this league. So if you never saw that video here, you can check it out. I'll put it a link in the top of the screen right now. Um, DeAndre Hopkins has got to step up and show up again in this game because if the Colts are able to shut down Derrick Henry in the run game, they're going to need to be able to convert some third and longs. They're going to be able to need to create explosive plays, and DeAndre Hopkins has been by far their most explosive player on offense. We also saw Chigakonkwo have his best game as uh, of the season last week. He was tackled at the one-yard line on one possession. He was so close to getting in the end zone finally. I think we could see um, the Titans continue to, to look for him to create explosive plays over the middle, but it's going to be, you know, a lot on DeAndre Hopkins, a lot of pressure on him to be the guy in the passing game that Will Levis can rely on. And can the Titans hit some of those deep shots that we haven't really seen in the last couple of weeks? Will Levis getting a little more conservative, not really airing it out quite as much as we've seen, you know, in his first couple starts. This is a defense where I think you can take advantage of some mismatches down the field. They have a lot, of, they have a very young secondary. So Will Levis needs to get things going for this team. If the run game is working, it opens everything up for the passing game. 
But if we if it happens the way we saw last time, where the Colts are able to shut down the run game, they'll need to to back those defenders off the line of scrimmage by hitting some explosive pass plays. Absolutely. And look, keep in mind, like in today's league, I find it very difficult to hit some of those vertical shots because every every defense reacting to the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Two high safeties became the new look. It became the new became the norm again so to speak, in today's NFL. So everyone wants to take away the vertical shot. I think that first game against the Falcons, you know, he was sort of fortunate. The Falcons probably didn't have a lot of respect for him, right? Rookie quarterback making his first career start. We don't got to play single. We don't got to play too high all the time. We can come down and creep into the box, take away the run game, and take away uh, sort of the short underneath stuff. And he probably took them by surprise, right? Certainly hitting as many deep shots as he did. And he's hit a couple others, uh, you know, a couple against Jacksonville, although that game was out of hand. But uh, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe defenses have enough respect Respect, um, for Will Levis based on what he's done in the vertical passing game to maybe take away some of those looks, but it'll be worth monitoring. Uh, I, I do want to bring up something about the defense before we get into our uh, predictions for this game. So I'm going to take it away. Yeah, let's flip over and talk Titans defense against the Colts offense here. You talked about the over-under on the Will Levis sacks. Well, I got another thing I'm looking out for. Uh, the Titans did not sack Gardner Minshew the last time these two teams met. That's absolutely ridiculous. In fact, they only had one sack in that game. It was on Anthony Richardson. If Mm -hmm. I recall correctly, it might have been the one that Anthony Richardson got hurt on because he was rolling out of the pocket. Harold Landry caught him, brought him down, hurt his shoulder. Uh, Whether it was or wasn't, uh, that was the one quarterback takedown that they had. In that game, the fact that they didn't sack Gardner Minshew is absolutely ridiculous to me. He's not a very mobile quarterback. They got to be able to get pressure on him. And now, remember, this defense is coming off, I believe, a four sack performance against Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. Or Dina Coatry had a two sack game. He continues to turn back the clock, leads his team in sacks. Jeffrey Simmons was unblockable in that game. He had a sack. Arden Key had a strip sack in that game. We're starting to see Harold Landry play better football over these last couple of weeks. So, I'd like to see if this team line can keep things going um, after that four-sack performance. Kind of remember, hey, we didn't take this guy down once last time we played. That's unacceptable. Keep in mind, the challenge will be a lot larger, right? This is a pretty good Colts offensive line versus a Panthers offensive line that I think is the worst in the NFL. So uh, the challenge will be a lot stiffer, but I'd like to see the Titans kind of rise to the occasion, answer the call, and take down Gardner Minshew a couple of times. Yeah, stop the run and get after the quarterback is always going to be a recipe for success. This Colts offense is 18th overall in passing yards per game, 11th in rushing yards per game, 15th in total yards per game. So they're outside the top 10 in all the yards per game metrics, but they're 8th in total points per game. And a big reason for that is they're 8th in red zone touchdown percentage, scoring a touchdown on 60% of their trips to the red zone. So if the Titans are able, you know, to... If the Titans do seed some yards, they got to stonewall it up in the red zone because the Colts have been scoring touchdowns when they get close. A large part of that is the running game that they're able to be, be effective with. Jonathan Taylor had two touchdowns last week. That'll likely be Zach Moss this time around, who, as we mentioned, had two touchdowns the last time he played the Titans. So uh, obviously it always starts up front and getting after the quarterback is huge. Get pressure on Gardner Minshew because Josh Downs roasted you last time you played. Six catches, 97 yards. Michael Pittman is the team's leading receiver this year. A big-bodied guy that that poses a tough matchup to most cornerbacks who are not as big as he is. But if you get pressure on the quarterback, you can take away that stuff down the field. And Gardner Minshew is a guy who, who you mentioned he's not as mobile He's not unmobile either. He may not be a guy that's going to take off and run for a bunch of yards, but he can dance around in the backfield in the pocket and buy time. And he's, he's been pretty good at that for his career and creating things off script where maybe the structure of the play, he doesn't necessarily read it and process it immediately, but he has a little bit of athleticism and elusiveness in the pocket to, to just play backyard football and make something happen down the field. And I think that is going to be a key in this game is when he does break contain and start dancing around in the backfield, the Titans got to cover up and they got to get to him quickly and force him to throw the ball away. Titans had four sacks last week. As you mentioned, it could have been more. There were a, a number of plays where there was one in particular where Bryce Young just like ran through Danico Autry and Jeffrey Simmons, who both had their hands on him, wrapped him up and couldn't bring him down. He, he scrambled for some yards there. But a number of other times where Bryce Young was just running around in the backfield, trying to find somebody open down the field and eventually just had to throw the ball away as the pressure finally got to him. Could have been more than four sacks. You'd like to see them pick up where they left off last week in this game. 100%. 100%. And, and, and I got to, you know, before we get into our prediction, hats off. Um, to Colts head coach Shane Steichen. I know Titans fans don't yeah. want to hear it, but I cannot believe that this team is six and five. I'm going to be blown with you. I, I cannot believe going into the year, 
who the heck had this team at six and five? I mean, even with Anthony Richardson at quarterback, who, you know, was raw, yada, yada. The fact that they lost him and, uh, you know, they got a, a veteran journeyman like Gardner Minshew. And, and, and I think he's a very capable quarterback, one of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL. That's why they went out and got him, right? Because they knew they had a raw rookie quarterback. But even still, I cannot believe they are six and five. A nice road win, by the way, over the Bucks last week. A Bucks team that dominated the Titans easily a couple of weeks ago, in truth. Uh, six and five into a playoff spot. I mean, that is mind blowing. I thought that, I, I, to be honest, I'm happy about it. Because my biggest fear was them being terrible again this year and getting Marvin Harrison Jr., for example, to pair with, uh, to pair with Anthony Richardson. So I, I'm happy they're six and five, but hats off <laughs> to Shane Sykin. What a hell of a job he's doing in his first year. I think they've clearly got a very good head coach. You know, Anthony Richardson's health will play a role. He's got to stay healthy for them. Uh, you know, it hurt a couple of times this year in such short succession. So I think there's a bit of concern there, um, but really had an amazing job done by Steichen. I think I think the Colts did a good job hiring a head coach. Should probably upset you a little as a Titans fan. Yeah, don't, no doubt about it. He he has done a lot with very little. The Colts were, you know, thought of as being one of the worst teams in the league coming into this Three, season. Three, four-win team, I thought for sure. Yeah. They're already at six and five. That's crazy. Yeah, and ahead of the Titans, who I think it's fairly... I mean, if you go back to the preseason, the Titans being 4-7 and seven at this point in the year, last in the AFC South by two full games. Not a lot of people would have predicted that, so no. pretty uh, pretty good job there by Shane Steichen. Let's get to our predictions here. Is this it? The first time since the internet was invented that the Titans will score 30 points? No. No way in hell am I predicting <laughs> a third. I will not predict the 30-burger until they hit it six times in a row. I just I don't have enough confidence to do it. I just don't. But I will. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this because I called you out. I called bullshit on the playoff stuff. Blah 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 blah. I'm going with a Titans win. I am. I don't think that's the bias in either. A couple of things. I'm starting to buy into them playing well at home. You know, four and zero at Nissan Stadium. I don't. I think that's now a large enough sample size where it's not just a coincidence. Uh, I've also got very stupid reasoning for predicting this. I'm going to go out and say it. I do not care. I'm going to say it anyway. Um, sometimes I like to think of these matchups as very simple. And sometimes when you think of them as simple, you get them right. You don't overthink things. I don't think the Colts are good enough to execute the regular season sweep over the Titans. And I don't think the Titans are bad enough to take the regular season sweep from the Colts, especially with this game being at Nissan Stadium. I just don't see this. This feels like very much, you know, they're two average teams uh, or mm -hmm. below average even on the Titans side. It just screams, ah, we're going to split the season series. We're, you know, we're going to get one. You're going to get one. I think the Titans win this game. It's at, again, it's at Nissan Stadium. They're coming off a big win at home against Carolina. They feel rejuvenated. There's some energy in that building again. I'm going to go Titans uh, 20, Colts 16. Nice. I like that. I'm also going to pick a Titans win, even though I'm. it feels stupid to even think about doing that. But all the things you just <laughs> said, I totally buy into them. And the the playing better at home is a real thing. Colts are allowing 24 points per game. I'm going to put 24 on the board for the Titans here and say that they win 24 to 20. That's my prediction. I don't know how it's going to play out, but you know what I'd love to see is Will Levis get a chance to engineer a game winning oh. drive just to see the, like how he does in the clutch when you, when you got to have it obvious passing situation against a team that's not that good and a defense that's not great let's see if he you know give him a chance against a softer opponent versus when he has to, when he might have to do it later on in his career in the playoffs or something let's get some experience for him there in a game winning drive situation so titans trail 2017 late in the game three and a half minutes to go the titans get the ball back and will levis leads them down the field caps it off with a touchdown to to win the game for the titans that's my prediction let us know your prediction in the youtube comments below what you got justin who catches the game winning touchdown uh josh wiley I love that. I was hoping you were going to say Josh Wiley. I don't know why, but I really was. <laughs> I also, uh, preseason, put a little bet down on the Titans. Over three and a half division wins. They got to win this game for that bet to be alive because they have to win, obviously, four of six to get over three and a half division wins, and they've already lost two. So they got to sweep Houston. They got to beat Jacksonville in the last week of the season. But before any of that, they got to win this game for me to have any shot at cashing this bet. So go Titans, tighten up, baby. We're still rooting for them to make the playoffs. Screw draft order, screw draft position. Let's get Will Levis some much needed experience in those high pressure situations. All right, anything else, Justin, before we say goodbye? That does it. 
That does it. All right. Make sure you're following Justin on Twitter at Justin M underscore NFL. You can follow me at Titans Film Room. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Music City Audible. We appreciate everyone for listening and even more those who are watching. We'll be back next week to recap this game. Until then, y'all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.